Welcome to the Don't Argue podcast. We're live in studio. Join with me is the Daniel. He's taking over. Free man. <laughs> I said he's going live, Jen. but he's gone for it. Keep going. And as well as Jed Langdon. Today we Jed will be. Jed Langdon. Jed Langdon. Langdon. Sorry, I'll butcher. <laughs> we're, we're live. You can Jed tell we're live. I've already butchered everyone's we're names. Live. All right, welcome to the... We've got two special live episodes for this trade period. We've got this one, and then next Wednesday, so 17th of October, we will be live from 7.30 to 8.30, so the last hour will probably be way more chaotic than this one, but as you can tell, we need a test run to get some of this, <laughs> to get some of this match. out. Exactly, this is a practice match. All right, so what we're going to do is we do have one breaking trade that just happened. But before we get into that, if you have any questions at all, and Brownie's going to be on the Facebook page, which is going to do right now to make yeah, sure it's actually really working. Cool. <laughs> we should see if we're actually live. Yeah, yeah we're, we're live. live. <laughs> all right. So if you have any questions at all, or you just have any opinions or anything on the trade period, Ask Mr. 28 Inch Pythons here and he will share it. Keep it footy related, please, by the way. So, we're going to start with the latest one, the latest trade which just dropped, which is that. Actually, Jed, what is it? What just happened? Gary Rowan is a cat. Gary Rowan is now at Geelong. So, the Swans will give up pick. Well, no, the Cats 61. will give the Swans pick 61, which they acquired as part of the Lincoln McCarthy deal with Brisbane. And then Sydney's on trade of that pick to North Melbourne for Ryan Clark, which. Not sure where that leaves Nick Newman because that was possibly going to be the deal involving Nick Newman and Ryan Clark for a straight swap. But outside of that, if there are any updates, we will get to them. But we're going to start with probably the biggest move out of yesterday. And look, it's made one person on this panel a little bit grumpy. Let's just put it that way. All around. Dylan Shield, after it was leaning towards Carlton St Kilda or Hawthorne, Essendon was believed to almost be out of it, but then... Apparently, they realised they couldn't get Jack Martin, so they bought Sheil a latte, which he preferred over Carlton's private jet, and yeah, has announced he will be going or wants to get to Essen. And before we get into the actual trade, Brownie, how do you feel about dun, 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 not landing Mr. Sheil? It's quite disappointing. <laughs> Pretty much all the supporters were thought this deal was wrapped up, that Dylan Shield was practically... They'd done the, got the jump shots. Through, yeah, really? all of, <laughs> had the jumper on, and then we find out these at Essendon of all teams. They just come out of nowhere, RKO. <laughs> <laughs> stolen. <laughs> it's just, it's a bit of a shock, to be honest, but... Yeah. Shattered out of ten. It's quite shattering. <laughs> quite shattering. Because you, you only imagine him playing with Charlie Curnow oh, and Paddy Cripps in the midfield. It would have been... Dominant. Been dominant. But, no, well, people can dream. He can play. <laughs> See how he goes there. So I think it will do pretty well down there. So, Brown, Bob Mullane should be happy. What did you think of Shields manager saying that uh, he wanted to go to a big Melbourne club? Most people thought that that would rule out St Kilda, leaving Essendon, Hawthorne and Carlton. Mm. Are Carlton a big club? At least in Dylan Shields' eyes, do you think? Like, do you think that played well, you think? Well, you think he... You'd think Carlton's a big club, but no one seems to really be wanting to go. Apart with, with well, you they do, just locked yeah. in Mitch McGovern, which we're but, gonna get to. and Will Centerfield. But it's not. It's a bit disappointing because the big fish was Dylan Shields, yeah. and Carlton used to be able to lock in the big fish, and now they yeah. can't find seem to lock it in. No big fishies. All right, now for Essendon, obviously GWS are going to definitely want their first round pick, which is going to be at the moment is pick nine. Their next pick, those pick 34. So GWS probably want two first rounders. Is it going to be probably a future if they gave their next year's first round on top of pick nine? Would that be enough? Um, yeah, I, I guess that first rounder next year is going to be pretty low yeah, now. Well, and Essendon, they, no, they should be. They're top four. They top should six. be a lock, lock yeah. for the finals, you'd say, anywhere above that. Um, yeah, this year's first round, I think it's perfect pick nine. Yep. Compared to, say, Carlton's pick one, which they'd be hesitant to get rid of. Yeah. And then Hawthorne, who pick finished 14, top four, yeah, 15, they'd yeah. be too low. Yeah. So I think Essendon's right in that range. Pick nine's a great starting point. Yeah, and for Essendon, I mean, it gives them, we've talked about they've lacked, they lacked an inside ball winner, which is what Sheil is. I mean, he was all Australian in 2017, so he averaged 27 touches, 11 of those were contested and six clearances. He dropped off a bit last season, but I think that with the, he's not going to be behind Cali Caniglio. You know, he can even throw Ward into that Whitfield coming off half-back. So he's going to get more opportunities. 
even though Essendon do have, they're still quite a strong, they have a strong midfield, but there is going to be more opportunity for him. I, I don't know if it throws them straight into premiership contention, though, to be very well. Yeah, premiership, it's, well, one, it's October of 2018. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're the premiership contenders a little of, bit early. of the off yeah. season, like like they were last year, as well as Port, yeah. um, right or wrongly. But um, yeah, they'll be in the mix. I think they'll be in the mix. Yep. In All the right. top four. Moving on to that one's obviously yet to get done. Moving on to a deal that got done earlier today, which is that Jared Pollock and Jasper Pittard, which if you follow your NBA, looks exactly like Austin Rivers. Those two <laughs> are off to <laughs> are off to North mm-hmm. Melbourne as well as pick forty eight for pick 11 and a 2019 first rounder. So, in all effectiveness, it's Polak and Pittard for pick 11. Polak is what North wanted. Like, they need an outside runner who's got that little bit of polish, but yeah. it's not what... It's it's not the big fish. They it wasn't the yeah. yeah, the end. So, it's a good, it's a good pick-up, but I don't think it really pushes them over the edge. And Pittard, he had a really good 2016. He averaged 22 touches off that half-back line. But the last two years has been a bit down, only 11 games last year. But, I mean, it's a bit cruel to call him steak knives, but Jack Chris was steak knives and he turned out all right. So, But he is kind of the steak knives in the deal. But moving on to West Coast's big one, which, well, West Coast, but North Melbourne, the, the big fish they wanted to land, Andrew Gaff. North Melbourne have now struck out on Kelly, Dusty, Dugowie, and now Gaff. Heaney. Heaney, yeah, um, they apparently threw a big deal at Heaney. They're probably going to throw another big deal at Kelly, Kelly. again at the yeah. end of this year. It's reported that Gaff signed a six-year deal worth about $5.5 million. So he turned down, North was about $7.5 million for a seven-year deal. So he has turned down quite a bit of money. But for Gaff, do you reckon it's the right decision for him? 26 years old. For sure. Yeah, he's just come into his prime. Yeah. Premiership team, they'll be in yeah. West Coast to be right up there again next year. Yeah. North, you don't know where they'll be. I rated them if they got Gaff, if they got along him. with Pollock, yeah. Pittard. But I still uh, think Hall. even if North got, if they landed Gaff, let's say Pollock, Hall, and let's say they, you know, they had in a Newman or someone like that, or Dom Tyson as well as rumoured to be going there, I still don't think they're on the same tier as Richmond and West Coast. No, but it's a starting, it's a starting point for a club who has. Yeah reached out and clawed for a free agent. Yep. Throwing, so they're long. throwing yeah. so much money at people and players yep. are still saying no. That'd be a win alone for North. Just to say, hey, we got two we or three blokes yeah. who wanted to come to and be North Melbourne players and they restart again next year. Kelly, does he want to come? Yep. Maybe, yep. maybe not, but they'll be in the mix. Yep, the they eight, certainly sure. will be the mix. All right, we're going to make Brownie a little bit happier now because Mitch McGovern, it's a done deal. He will be a Carlton next year. So come get Mitch McGovern and a 2019 third round pick. Adelaide get pick 13, which you'll find out in a second how they got that. Shane McAdam, who is one of the players that come gets priority to through the state league, the two mature age players. So he's drafted by Carlton and then sent over to Adelaide and a fifth round pick next year. Sydney get 26, 28 and 40. So they lose 13, but because they want to match a bid for Nick Blakely, they needed those extra, the way the confusing index points work. They needed those extra picks because it equates to more than pick 13. So that deal is done, which I think is a bit surprising. We talked about last week as they seem like a bit of a stalemate. We know the history of those two clubs not getting along, but they managed to get a deal done, probably one of the first deals. So Yeah, well, can't see finally they were locking one deal. Yeah. Do you think... Is 13 a little over? Yeah, I was going to say, did one team give up too much? Is that why it happened so early? I reckon they gave up, paid a little bit of overs, but they needed, the pressure was on after Shield Shield, to lock someone in, and McGovern looked like it was pretty much a lock, it was just how much they were willing to give up, so... What do you guys think about Carlton moving around their mature age? Yeah, so if you don't know, yeah, so instead of getting a priority pick, Carlton and Gold Coast both got priority access to any of the state league players, so they got the top... Two or three. Carlton got two, Gold yeah, Coast got, got, got three. three. Yeah, so Gold yeah. Coast has actually, Gold Coast have selected Chris Burgess and Josh Corbett, both 22-year-olds. They're actually going up to the Suns. Carlton has already given one to Geelong. They gave Nathan For Kruger, yeah, who was a SANFL forward. So he goes to Geelong. And then, of course, they've included Shane McAdam in this deal to get McGovern. Is it a little bit like... The whole point of them getting these picks was to get some mature bodies in to help them, and now they've just 
kind of ship them off to get other pieces? Or you, I know you're okay with it, but Jim, yeah. are you okay with it in terms of what it means? I don't like it. I don't. I don't think the AFL would be happy about it either. The mature age, they wanted Carlton and Gold Coast to have mature age bodies, yeah. so that they were competitive, so that they were yeah, at they least watchable. Yeah, yeah. So we're not yeah. seeing eighteen year olds mm. being monstered. Yeah. Um, for Carlton to trade that on for a third round pick, it doesn't leave them anywhere. It it doesn't take them forward. Yeah, especially the the Nathan Krug one. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, they, for such little value too. Yeah. You think if they were getting back? I mean, the McAdam one is rounder. okay because it gets a Mitch McGovern, but yeah, like, but still, like, it's a throw in. Yeah. Instead of a player being on Carlton's list. Yep, it is. It's an interesting one. I think the Suns are doing more what the AFL wanted them to do. But moving on to Tim Kelly, who. His managers came out and basically said he's not going anywhere except West Coast and yeah, had some not-so-nice words to say about Fremantle. Um, is it... Now, the question, we'll get to what's he worth later, but do contracted players have too much power at the moment? Because Tim Kelly was taken, I think off the top of my head, it was 24 in last year's draft after being overlooked about six years. They finally yeah. give him a chance. He's got a two-year contract like every other per- kid and older player who's drafted gets that two-year contract. Is it fair that after one year they're just allowed to say, no, I'm out? Um, I don't hate it if he wants to be traded and go home. Yeah. It sucks, yeah, Geelong gave him the chance. But for him to say, I want to go home, but I want to go to West Coast, not Freo, you know, whether that's, that's coming from his management, yeah, I, I don't like that. I'd, I'd like to see a model, and I don't think it's going to happen, where a player says, I want to nominate and go home, yeah. and then from within that state, whether it be South Australia. It can be. Yeah, the two teams, if they yeah. both want him, get to bid for that, and it creates competition. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, especially, like, free agency is one thing, but when they're in contract, it's a little bit like, surely this got... What's the point of a contract? Well, that's the debate with it's turning into the sports in the US, yeah, and that's exactly. what's the point of contracts when... They can just request a trade, yeah. and that's and it. And say, I'm walking out if you don't trade me. Yeah. So it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it seems a little bit unfair. It seems like the players have a little bit too much power, which uh, might be controversial, but I just, especially contract the players, to just be able to say, you're sending me to this exact club. There's no problem with wanting to go home. Completely understand that. But then to just say, I refuse to go to any other club other than West yeah. Coast, or I'm walking next it's, year, seems... It's a tough sell, though, Fremantle right now. You look at oh, West yeah. Coast... Well, I don't blame him Rating to dreamers, wanting to go to yeah. West Coast, but like he got Geelong gave him his chance. Mm. Like really, this was it for him. One or two more chances at twenty six, and that's it. Like, he, and now now he's a young star, high yeah, value. Exactly. And no, I, th- I it's hard to know if it's him or his manager, but it just seems a little bit too much. The Cats want a top ten pick for Tim Kelly. Eagles would say twenty twenty and twenty two is more fair. I don't know if he's week, top 10. Was it Kelly we spoke about around that 10? I said he could push up yeah. higher than that 10 mark, and you guys... I don't think he's worth... Morning. I don't think he's worth 10. Yeah. I think... I think he's like that Where's 13 the to 16, though, yeah. like around that range. Which, I mean, it's so hard to, to find the, the clubs to get there, because obviously the Eagles just have that 20 and 22 with the compensation they got from Lysette. Moving on to the other Western Australia club, Fremantle. They've obviously, they've got some serious, they pretty much are the linchpin of the Neil, the Hogan, and the May trade, which Neil at the moment, they, Fremantle apparently want more than Brisbane's pick five. I just think that's them saying that, and eventually they'll give up for pick five. I mean, yeah, Neil just that. won their best and fairest. He's clearly their second best player behind, behind five. So I get them wanting to play hardball, but pick five is pretty good. Yeah, Hawthorne got Tom five. Mitchell for like, 13 or 14? Like yeah. Pick 5. And well, they good. took, they yeah. took um, what they accepted pick 2 last year yeah, while yeah. going out. Yeah, except, well, exactly. That was the uh, interesting decision. But um, <laughs> So that one's the Neil one. But then now Lobb has said he wants to go to Fremantle and now Fremantle is saying they're his priority because Hogan hasn't, Hogan hasn't told Fremantle he wants to go there. He's just open to it. Lobb has signalled that he wants to be at the Dockers, which makes things a little bit interesting because Frio, as I said, they've got pick they got pick six and then they could get pick five from Brisbane for Neil. But Melbourne want both of those picks for Hogan, but then their next pick is pick seventy nine and that's nowhere near enough to get the deal yes. done for Lob. That's not even a throw in. <laughs> no, yeah. so they're probably gonna if it's if it's a future pick or if they have to do something else, but they've got a lot of juggling to do with Hogan, Neil and Lob. 
to try get them all there. And then if they're going to enter at all into the Tim Kelly sweepstakes, we don't. Like, it seems like it's West Coast, but yeah. they still have the right to enter into it. Yeah, they've got some work that that team has some work to do. Do you think those players a good fit for Freo? Long and uh, Hogan in a forward line. They obviously went after McCarthy and have him. He hasn't... Well, they've clear, they haven't had a forward, I said last week, they haven't had a forward since they had Pavlich. So adding Hogan, big tick. If I was them, I would give up five yeah. and six for Hogan. It's overs by a little bit. And they've been going but, for a forward exactly. since the bloke was in. Exactly. I don't yeah, really prime. think... I think it's worth the risk for them because they've tried McCarthy, they've tried Curse, and they've tried so many pieces, and none of them worked. And all of them, none of them have been like a genuine. You're a superstar full forward, which Hogan can be a sixty goal a year forward. So, yeah. yes, five and six hurts, but I don't know. For me, I mean, look at them last year. They had two and three, and they got Brayshaw and Chera. Now, yeah. those two may be amazing. They might turn out to be two of the best midfielders in the game. But would you prefer right now to have Brayshaw and Chera or Hogan? I, the future's hard, like it's hard to look forward to forecast forward, but I think it's worth five and six to just go for to go for it. Yeah. Forwards don't fall up on yeah. the trees like it takes a while. Yeah. Look at Josh Kennedy, Carlton had him, exactly, and we chose to trade for Dunn, but it takes a while for these forwards to develop. Yeah. But once they do, yeah, you don't get rid of them. No, they're worth their waiting. Or if you can get them, you get them. Yeah, but at the same time. Every single year, as we talked about, Hogan gets linked to Fremantle. So it's that, do we pay a little bit overs to get him in now, or do we risk it and go, let's leave it a year and maybe he walks to us when when he's at the end of his contract. It's hard to and know. On the other side of that, he's three out of four years, more. he's been yeah. linked to so for Melbourne, Fremantle. Melbourne, yeah. do they just cut ties? And That's why I reckon Melbourne, well, they've apparently told him they will do it for pick, for pick five and six. So I think they're willing to do that. It's just whether... Where he's a long time. He party. could change his mind. Oh, yeah. You, you never know. Exactly. He might want to stay. They could get to the granny and oh, he might stay. We saw them make the prelim. So, yeah. man, take that take that extra step. But the whole Stephen May deal revolves all around those picks. So, that one can't happen until Neil falls and then if Hogan falls and Long falls, there's so many dominoes that have to fall. Tom Lynch, as well, was one of the first moves, which he's joined the Tigers on a seven-year deal. Uh, Sacrificed about $2 million from what the Suns' offers was to go to the Tigers. Are we worried at all that free agency... I don't know if it's necessarily bought in entirely to create equalisation, but it's clearly not helping when we've got... No. Like, um, it's what, not a good look. I think it's half... It's Yeah, we're seeing clubs... Like, obviously, Richmond, Collingwood, Essendon are getting the big fish, and then it seems like these same clubs like North Melbourne, uh, a club like the Bulldogs and Kilda, who want, yeah. want the big players, aren't getting them as well. No. And obviously, interstate... Players wanting to come home is a huge deal. But we also look at the Suns. Like, they have been rabble for so many years. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to it's hard to sell players to stay at the Suns. Yeah. I think GWS is a better case. And we just saw Shield probably take... He probably could have got the Essendon's worth money. He couldn't have got the Blues or St Kilda at yeah. GWS. But, I don't know, he might have got close to Essendon's offer at GWS. But he wants to come home. So. Even with GWS, you've just seen it. Just been better consistently on and off the field. Yeah, Gold Coast. What they've had? As we said, you have to coaches. sell a premiership. So, yeah, and neither of those clubs can sell a premiership. But and then moving on to the Giants, as we said, Shields obviously gone, and Rory Lobb has said he wants to join Fremantle. Will Setterfield as well has chosen the Carlton Football Club yeah, as his probably. preferred destination <laughs> over Essendon. That's a W. <laughs> yeah, so Brownie's happy mm. about that one. <laughs> so whether or not the deal is mood and happy, but <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit happy. For GWS, first gen, your take. Is their window closing or do they need to take a hit now to have the salary? Because they need to clear salary cap. And next year, it's Kelly and Caniglio. Yeah. Is it worth taking the hit on Shield and Lobb to be able to sign those guys up or at least match the offers? If you can keep Kelly and Caniglio, you yeah. take the hit. I don't think they have that much of a choice with their salary. I don't know what it is, but it seems like one person, like either Lobb or Shield, had to go. Yeah. But... That's the thing. If you're taking out a lob, you're taking out a shield. How do the Giants? Obviously, they were hurt by injuries last um, last season. Yeah. Can they get to that same like in the mix in the finals enough to convince Canelio? Yeah. Well, I mean, the two prelims and then they dropped off this Kelly. year back to semi final. But it's that can they take that next step? That's yeah. the question. They got the talent. Yeah, abs- well, absolutely have the talent, but losing the the lob one hurts yeah. because. 
You no, know, now Mumford's apparently the mummifies. Apparently <laughs> considering coming back, a comeback, which would be interesting. But if he doesn't, like uh, Dawson Simpson is their one ruckman losing a lot, mm-hmm. so that's a bit of a hole. Especially if I don't know, we'll have to see if the mummifier does come back or not. That would be good. I'd like to have Mumford. Oh, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm okay with, with, with Mummy coming back. All right, where? But he's not going to be the first option. No, they but yeah. Back, yeah. I don't know if Dawson Simpson's good enough to be a foot. We saw what happened with Richmond going with Nan Kerbis. I, I think eventually it gets to the point where you do need at least one solid ruck. Yeah. We saw Melbourne and Collingwood this year, and Nick Nat when he's not well, injured. West Coast with two regular ruck. Exactly, exactly. I think that... Take out the flag. Yeah. Eventually, I think you need to bite the bullet, and I'm not sure Dawson Simpson is a good enough number one ruckman to genuinely compete for a flag. All right, before we get into a few others, if you've just joined us now, if you have any questions or comments or anything... Mr. 28 inch pythons over We're here. On the He's on here waiting. He's on here waiting. We're waiting, so <laughs> throw us a question. Brownie wants to answer it. It can be anything. Bag him about Carlton. Does it? Just anything. Yeah, just one pot shot about the Blues. <laughs> just <laughs> just one pot shot. Before we get into some of these other ones, there's no updates, Brownie. We haven't had any trades no, happen or anything. Yet. It's a quiet Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> not, not much is <laughs> not happening. Much. Next Wednesday, crickets. we'll have the Crickets. Absolute at the crickets moment. at the moment. Have so the we trades. have this. Had the Gary Rowan one, but right now it's not. There's no action, but we'll go through some of the trades that have got done or free agency moves as well. Mr. Unmotivated is at the Cats. So Dalhouse uh, will join Geelong. The Dogs receive pick 25 as compensation. Meh. Just is what it is. I think Dalhouse, if he can get back to his best, could be a really good addition to that team. But if he's, you know, the form he's shown the last couple of years has been a huge drop-off from... From what he was It's the at. same as that whole Bulldogs premiership side. Yeah, but Libba, the news is that Libba is set to get another contract. So we talked about last week how he was in that he's video. In that video. So yeah. we'll have to see, but apparently he's going to get a contract with the Bulldogs. Reese Conker has joined Fremantle as a free agent. Tigers got pick 37 as compensation. They so, may lose that though after the lynch. Yeah, after the lynch. I'm not yeah. sure exactly yeah. how that works. Yeah. But yeah. Sc- I don't think yeah. anyone does. Nobody understands it. Scott Life set. Has joined Port. Uh, the Eagles decided not to match. There were some some rumours that they would, but I don't think they ever will because they had a chance to match for the whole year. So they wouldn't have left it so late. But that contract's about five year, three million. So kept Gaff, but have lost Lysette. Again, there's Hickey, of, Roughhead, that they're kind of looking into. Yeah. yeah. That, um, they got end of second round compensation for Lysette? Yeah, I think that's the 22. Two. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Oh, I don't know if that's at 22. 22. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe end of Let's first. That. Yeah. All I know is that West Coast have 20 and 22 at the moment, so yeah. I assume one of those, or one of them was Gold Coast and one of them's compensation, I think. Lincoln McCarthy has joined Brisbane, who's also Lockie Neal's good friend, which seems to be probably one of the big selling points for him, plus a third rounder and a fourth rounder, four, a third rounder and a fourth rounder. So basically, Brisbane get Lincoln McCarthy, Geelong move from pick 55 to 43. That's about it. I think it's a good move for Brisbane. Get a guy. Yeah. I don't know if they're selling really in, Yeah, I don't know if it's really yeah, in their mean. best team. To be perfectly honest, but but even so, if it means you Lockie Neal gets over the line, and we do have a breaking trade. I just beat you Brownie beat to it. Tom Hickey has been traded to West Coast, which we just talked about in exchange for a second round pick. So there is their that is Scott Lysett's replacement. Done and dusted for a second round pick. Depends. I mean, it's going to be a late second round, obviously, but. I think that's a decent move. It's really just a cup. To be perfectly honest, it's a com- it's just holding a spot down until Nick Nat gets back. Yeah. Like, I don't think. Yeah, I think right. Vardy will be above Hickey unless Hickey. You yeah. know, Vardy goes into the number one yeah. spot now. Yeah, and I think they'll keep their structure the same. So that one's a done deal. I don't know, it doesn't really hurt St Kilda that much to be honest. He wasn't really around. He was there, but not. You know, he wasn't. He's not the be all and end all for St Kilda. That's for sure. Corey Ellis and Anthony Miles, two more Tigers who are moving up to the Gold Coast. The It's basically for a third round pick, a 2019 third round pick. Suns get Ellis, Miles, and a 2019 third rounder. Richmond receive a 2019 third rounder. It's so, funny the timing on that one. How very similar to when up, the yeah. uh, Lynch, Lynch yeah. deal. So it makes you think Richmond giving up two of those players for essentially nothing if that's a... Mm. A goodwill agreement for Gold Coast not to match that offer yep. on Tom Lynch. It could be. Not that I think they would have matched it because they couldn't have got anything better. But who knows? Yeah. Who knows? You, know, pick, you take pick three in compensation. Exactly. So Nathan Kruger, as we mentioned before, will be going to Geelong via Carlton's access to the State League players. 
Chris Burgess and Josh Corbett. So the Suns, as I think I mentioned, so the Suns have signed Burgess, who's uh, finished fourth in the West Adelaide's best and fairest last season. They also signed Josh Corbett, who won the VFL's most promising player award. So they're two 22-year-olds, done what the AFL kind of wanted them to do by keeping immature yeah. age players. So look, we'll have to wait and see how they go. Darcy Moore's agreed to a two-year deal with Collingwood. Tom Langdon toured Sydney's facilities the other day. So he's he does have an offer from Collingwood, but we'll have to wait and, and see. they left it a little late. Yeah, it might be. Uh, they didn't have an offer on the table till a couple of days ago, so who knows what's happening there. Uh, Marcus Adams as well, he wants to go to Brisbane. He's requested a trade, but the Bulldogs are pretty determined to keep him. This guy at. makes no sense to me. As in no sense that he wants to go to Brisbane? or No sense in that you've got a guy who committed to the Bulldogs. I think, like, what's happening at the Bulldogs? for? Because he was linked to go home to Western Australia, I yeah. think. And yeah, then, that was the initial link. So, and then Collingwood was interested. And, and then if you think, okay, he's either going to go home or stay at the Bulldogs, yeah. where does Brisbane come in? And it makes you think, how, how is Brisbane such an attractive offer from the Bulldogs after re-signing there? Everyone just, wants to go to Brisbane. They're a destination yeah, club like, right now. Like, it's like what's, well, the Bulldogs aren't, it looks like. It. And it's like, what's happening there? for? No, while well, talking about the Bulldogs, there's been some rumours that, obviously, Chad Wingard and the Bulldogs, uh, the Bulldogs have been keeping an eye on him, but also Hawthorne now, they didn't get Shield. They may ramp up their efforts to get Chad. West and the Bulldogs are definitely in the box seat, though, because they got that pick seven where the Hawks is yeah. that 14, 15 range, which won't get it done. I don't even know if Port will agree to one first rounder. They wanted two, but I'm not sure about that. Um, pick seven, sir. Yeah, I think I pick like seven for Wingard. Pick seven for Wingard two years ago when he was all Australian would not be a good deal, but pick yeah. three yeah, we're years not, ago. We're yeah. not talking about exactly, exactly. But now I reckon seven would be would be a fair would be a fair compensation. Dom Tyson as well. North Melbourne are apparently into him after the Suns were, but he wants to stay in Victoria, so. No gaff, but you might get Tyson. But that's, I mean, not the same player, but he's still round the mark. This, yeah, that's pretty much all the players who are looking to get traded or are on the trade block at the moment. Obviously, there's some of the other ones like Neil and stuff and May, which we just have to wait and see what happens with that Hogan deal if that gets done. Do you think if that, say if that Hogan deal falls apart, yeah. do you think May stays a son? Or is it... They- he the still hasn't Brisbane told the club there. apparently yeah. that he wants trade. Yeah. So I don't. I don't think. I wouldn't be surprised if he's still there at the start of next year. I'm not sure if he'll be there at the end of next year. Yeah. But yeah, I think Melbourne are pretty keen to get Stephen May if they're willing to give up Jesse Owen. Yeah, just says so, that mess. <laughs> that mess. Yeah, mess. I don't. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I would do it if I was Melbourne. I think it's a complete overreaction. But. Oh, well, if they feel that Melksham, Wiedemann and McDonald, that forward line can work with them and they can bolster that back line, then well, credit to them because that prelim final, Oscar McDonald and Sam Frost got touched up by yeah. Kennedy and Darling. So we'll have to wait and see. All right, that is all we've got for this week's episode. Thank you for tuning in. Next week, prepare your questions as well. Come on, ask Brownie a couple of questions oh, over here. We'll have... So next Wednesday, it'll be on the 17th of October from 7.30 to just after 8.30. And Chris will be back as well, so you can tune in and see the Mr. C. The prop himself. Lesnar, <laughs> the prop sport dog. Prop sport dog. And he appears at the big day. Thank you for listening. Just before we go, let's just check one more time, Brownie. I don't think we have any more updates. No more. No nothing. more updates. Nothing's we'll happening. we have to wait until next Wednesday. Brownie's falling asleep. All right, that's <laughs> all we've got. We'll see you next week. Thank you for listening.